loves Lily. It is morning in the Montague apartment. Agnes, the maid, is up and preparing breakfast. The telephone rings. Okay, okay. The residents of Edwin Montague and Lily Bohem, Agnes on this end. He's asleep, she's getting up, and I'm busy. What do you want? <laughs> now she's getting up, like I said. Okay, I'll tell her. All morning telephones. I better get breakfast ready before the master, I mean the monster, gets up. <laughs> My heart cries for you, dies for you. Oh, good morning, honey. Morning, Agnes. Who is that on the phone? Celia Taylor. Your friends have been calling all morning. I guess it's just a juicy piece of gossip about somebody. You know the girls. Girls, she says. You mean the Floridora girls. <laughs> I'd hate to own the cornfield those crows were headed for. <laughs> Agnes, they're old friends of mine. We were on the stage together before I married Edwin. They're still on the stage. <laughs> the last stage. <laughs> Please, Agnes, they were all famous beauties. Why, even today when we lunch together and we're seated in a restaurant, we make a very impressive picture. Like the Supreme Court. <laughs> <laughs> they all envy me, Agnes. Twenty-five years with Edwin. Oh, it's wonderful to be still in love with your husband, to know he loves you. That security of having implicit trust in each other. Love is blind. The biggest love affair in history has been going on for 25 years, right under your nose. A love affair? Yeah, between Edwin Montague and Edwin Montague. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I'm the only woman in his life. Oh, no, never mind, Agnes. I'll get the phone. Must be one of the hags. <laughs> Hello? Gloria? I'm fine. No, I haven't read Winter's column yet. Why? What's it say about Edwin? Gloria, will you please stop snickering and tell me? Oh, very well. I'll find out for myself. Agnes. Here's the paper. Wait, here's Winchell's column. Does it mention Edwin's name? Let me look. Hmm. Here. What's it say? Uh-uh. So what is it? Listen to this. The raised eyebrow department. Friends of the Eddie Montagues hope the missus doesn't find out. He made a fool of himself last night with what Copacabana cutie? Agnes, Eddie Montague? Oh, that can't be Edwin. That's all a mistake. Edwin was home last night. Mm, like he's been every night in the last 25 years. <laughs> Edwin at a nightclub with a chorus. <laughs> what a picture. Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's what the girls are cackling. <laughs> Of all the things to say about Edwin. Don't laugh, honey. You've got that awkward age. Too old for yo-yos and too young for Social Security. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't be silly. Agnes, can you picture Edwin at the Copacabana carrying on? Carrying on. One rum and they carry him out. <laughs> <laughs> We'd better find out who this Eddie Montague is. <laughs> There it is, the voice of Firestone. <laughs> Agnes, let me break it to him. Yeah. Good morning, Lily. Good morning, Edwin. Uh, <laughs> so what's the joke? Something funny? It's nothing, Edwin. It's just nothing. Uh, good morning, Agnes. Good morning. <laughs> so what's happening here? It's like waking up in the middle of a Milton Bell studio audience. <laughs> oh, Edwin. You me. <laughs> Agnes, stop laughing. I'd better before my girdle starts snapping all over the place. <laughs> Agnes, pour his coffee. Now, now, sit down, Edwin. Lily, let me in on it. Uh, what's so funny? Well, here's Winslow's column. Read it. Oh, uh, well, oh, 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 here. Eddie Montague making a fool of himself with what Copacopana cutie <laughs> when his wife finds out <laughs> Eddie Montague I Now Edward Now what have they done to the proud name of Montague Lily, my public? They've seen the magnificent Montague, king of the Shakespearean stage, make tender love to Juliet, sweet overtures to Ophelia, lyrical love to Portia, now 
the final role, Montague smooching with a Cobra Capara cutie. Edwin, it's a different Montague. But the world will think it's me. Oh, Edwin, stop being ridiculous. No one who knows you will ever believe you're running around with a chorus girl. And why not? Well... <laughs> Because, uh, well... Well? Let's face it, pal, at your age. Oh. Uh, that's what the snickering and wheezing was about. Edwin, all I meant was... The old gray Mary ain't what he used to be. All right, Agnes, back to the bread box with the rest of the crumbs. <laughs> Now, now, Edward, let me explain. I understand. You think I'm through. Perhaps you'd have a little more respect for me if I began whipping around town with a Copa Capana cutie on each arm. Holding you up? <laughs> All right, Agnes, just for that, you're not getting Memorial Day off. Your old Civil War regiment will march without you. <laughs> Go button your beard. <laughs> Edwin, this is childish. Now, I wouldn't have stayed married to you 25 years if I didn't still think you were the most attractive and charming man in the world. Really, Lily? Oh, yes, you're the last of the red hot poppers. <laughs> uh, Lily, try to remember the next time your dressmaker comes, have Agnes's tongue shortened. <laughs> now, please, I've had enough of this. Edwin, are you mad because I love you and trust you? Would you rather I were jealous of every woman who looked at you? No, Lily. All I wanted was for you to admit that uh, women might still look at me. They do, you know. <laughs> uh, Edwin, if I thought for a minute... Well, Lily, uh, I gave them all the once over. But compared to you, you're still my favorite beauty. Uh -huh. And what about me? Agnes, you're beautiful, too. You have no idea how proud I am of my little family walking down Fifth Avenue on Sunday with Lily on one side of me and you, Agnes, on the other side, trotting along with the newspaper in your mouth. <laughs> all right, all right. Now let's have breakfast. Good. I've got a nice hot bowl of farina just waiting to be pushed in his face. <laughs> Agnes, we've had enough bickering for one morning. Some more coffee. Okay, honey. How about you, ATO? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Real Lily, me and a Copa Capana cutie. I must put it in my scrapbook. <laughs> oh, we'd better get Winchell to explain that it isn't Montague, the Shakespearean actor, who's kicking up his heels in the hot spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't bother. You're right. Who'd believe it was me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Agnes, the door. I'll get it. Mrs. Boehm. Honey, it's your mother. Mother? Lily, my baby. I'm taking you right home to Cleveland. But, Mother, I flew here the minute I read Winchell's column. How can you stay in the same house with this brute? Now, Mrs. Boehm. Don't come near me. Oh, it's disgusting. Oh, mother, will you listen? Lily, my poor betrayed baby. I told you about actors. I knew it wouldn't last. Twenty-five years. What is that? <laughs> what is it, a summer romance? One mad weekend, I suppose. One mad weekend on the Albany night boat. Quiet, you woke mother. Lily, I told you about men like him. I knew this would happen the first time I saw him on the stage in those purple tights. <laughs> My dear Mrs. Boehm, what should Hamlet wear? Oshkosh overalls? <laughs> Mother, nothing's wrong. We're very happy. Lily, you little fool. So he sweet-talked his way out of it again. This is ridiculous. Ridiculous? Is it ridiculous for a mother to try and save her baby from an old reprobate who spends every night in speakeasies with chorus girls? Mother! Lily, I'm taking you home. Your old room is ready. Uncle Charlie fixed your dollhouse. <laughs> Goody, let's all play spin the bottle. <laughs> Lily, I refuse to be treated like a jazz mad Romeo out on a toot. Oh, slimy cheek. Thank heaven I got here to time. Mother, Edwin and I have been married for 25 years. We'll have it annulled. <laughs> annulled? What are you going to tell them? We're underage? <laughs> now, Edwin, let me explain it to her. 
mother. Edwin and I are one of the happiest couples in New York. Please even trust you to lie. Oh, to think that for this beat you broke your engagement to Charlie Hotchkiss. Mother, will you listen? Who's Charlie Hotchkiss? Really, I warned you about the big city. But, Mother... Who's Charlie Hotchkiss? I knew no good would ever come of it. We're happy. Who's Charlie Hotchkiss? Your father hated him from the first. Mother! Don't mother me! Yes, all of you. Who is Charlie Hotchkiss? <laughs> A finer man than you'll ever be, Mr. Edwin Montague. A respectable man Lily was engaged to until you came along with your sneaky ways and led her down the road to ruin. Oh, no, really, Mother? Lily, how come you never told me about Charlie Hotchkiss? Well, Edwin, he's a boy I grew up with. Owns his own dry goods store now. Lily, to think you threw all that away. Oh, Mother, stop. Edwin, it's unimportant. Strange you never told me about this Charlie dry goods. <laughs> Don't stop. Billy, I know it's unimportant, but how come you never mentioned it? But it wasn't really an engagement. People just took it for granted that Chuck and I would... Chuck. Now it's Chuck. <laughs> Edwin, will you forget about yes, it? Yes, and I'd also like to forget that you told me I was the only man in your life. You are. Now, this is so silly. Let's not discuss it anymore. I'd like to discuss it. I want to know more about these little secrets you've been keeping. I'll about. tell you about Charlie Hotchkiss. He's a decent, hard-working businessman, but he must sound dull to you, Mr. Sugar Daddy. His name is never mentioned in gossip columns linked with chorus girls. Will you shut up? Oh, Edwin, don't you dare speak to my mother like that. Well, she just comes here to cause trouble. Well, don't shout at her. You think I flew here all the way from Cleveland? Well, get on your broom and fly back. <laughs> Edwin, I'm ashamed of you. He's ashamed, Lily. I'm hold it, be fired. Oh, what a horrible day. Mother. So, well, what is it, Agnes? Look at the time. He'll be late for his broadcast. Yes, my broadcast. What broadcast? Never mind. What broadcast? I thought the loafer worked as a Shakespearean actor who never worked. Well, Mother, here's a program. Never mind. Edwin, you may be ashamed of it, but my mother has a right to know what you're doing. Yes, you big bum. What's he up to now? <laughs> He's Uncle Goodhart. Uncle Goodhart? Mother, my oh. Agnes, a glass of water. Coming up. Uncle Goodhart. I listen to him every day. <laughs> Mother. Lily, he's such a fine, sweet, kind man. Yes, Mother, you just saw how sweet and kind he can be. Lily, I did. Edwin, don't talk to me. Lily, what are you doing to this man? He's your husband. Mother, wait till I... Wait till I tell Cleveland. My son-in-law is Uncle Goodhart. <laughs> Don't you dare spread it around. Edwin, I'm waiting for you to apologize to my mother. Oh, Lily, he didn't mean it. You always did have a nasty temper, Lily. Mother! You never would let me teach you to cook. No wonder the poor man was driven to those nightclubs. He was hungry. <laughs> Now, wait. Lily and I are happy. Listen to that, Lily. How quick he is to forgive, just as he is on his program. Come here, Edwin. Yes, Mother. Shall I sit on your lap? <laughs> mother, we've been trying to tell you. Edwin and I are perfectly happy. It was a different Eddie Montague who was mentioned in the column. Oh, baby, I knew that all the time. Who could suspect dear old Uncle Goodhart? The goo goo. <laughs> oh, Edward. Uh, I'd better get to the station or there won't be an Uncle Goodhart broadcast today. Get your coat, Uncle. Now, Edwin, when you come home, I'm going to have a good home-cooked meal waiting for you. Mother Agnes does our cooking. I'll let her do it. I can stand some good food myself for a change. <laughs> Yes, yeah, the time. I'll be late. We'll be back with the magnificent Montague in just a moment. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. When you're relaxing on Sunday after your busy weekend, why not let NBC's big Sunday lineup help your evening along? For example, there's top dramatic listening for the entire family every Sunday when Theater Guild on the Air brings you a one-hour adaptation of an outstanding stage or screen success. 
The brightest stars of Broadway and Hollywood are brought right into your home through the magic of these Theater Guild presentations. So every Sunday, hear Theater Guild on the air on NBC. <laughs> And now, back to the magnificent Montague. He is just finishing his Uncle Goodhart program. Listen. And so, Ronald, even though you did steal $930,000 of the firm's money, you did finally realize that the good times and fun you had could not quiet your guilty conscience. So you went back to the firm and handed back the money that was left. The fact that it was only $8 is beside the point. <laughs> you realized your mistake, and once again you could hold up your head high, looking forward into the sun and light. <laughs> And so ends another episode of Uncle Goodhart. Until he meets you again tomorrow at his little cottage on the sunny side of the lane, here is Uncle Goodhart with his thought for the day. When your mother-in-law works in the garden and falls into the poison ivy patch, as she lies there writhing and screaming for help, step up and say, uh-uh, mustn't scratch. <laughs> Another epic from coast to coast. Here's the great director, Mr. Zinza. Oh, that was another humdinger of a program. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Zinza. I saw your name in Winchell's column. <laughs> yeah, all right, Zinza. It wasn't me. You can tell me, Mr. Montague. I'm one of the boys. I'll keep it under my hat. Well, if you do, it'll be the first time there was ever anything under there. <laughs> <laughs> when I read it this morning, I said to my wife, there's still life in the old dog. Yeah, I... <laughs> I said, uh, Mr. Zinza, it is of little interest to me what you chattered to your mate as you shared a coconut in that treetop this morning. <laughs> oh, no, we, we had pancakes. Uh. <laughs> Boy, my wife won't believe it. She wanted me to bring her up here to meet you. Oh, uh, really, Zinza, there's no sense dragging the cage all the way up here for that. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse you, me. Wait, I almost forgot. The sponsor wants to see you. The sponsor? When did he get sprung? <laughs> here he comes. Hello, Mr. Flogel. Well, there, Mr. Montague, I must say we don't see much of each other. Knock on wood. <laughs> I, I mean, what could I do for you, Mr. Flugel? Uh, Mr. Montague, this item that appeared in the newspaper... Uh, Mr. Flugel, I assure you. Now, 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 I'm a man of the world. <laughs> but we can't have stuff like this coming out in the papers. Your Uncle Goodhart, remember. You don't have to remind me. You're the kindly old philosopher. It don't look good to have you boozing around the dame, getting stinko in the hot pot. <laughs> me? Just... Stay out of the papers, come in sober, and give me a ring some night if she's got a friend. <laughs> uh, Mr. Flugel, even though the thought of spending an evening with you romping through the saloons with a blonde apiece has made me giddy with excitement, I must blast your hopes. The Eddie Montague referred to by Mr. Winchell is not me. Oh, the Winchell item. I know that wasn't you. That's an Eddie Montague who sings with Hot Lip Lupo's orchestra. Then what are you talking about? Uh, here, here where you mentioned in Earl Wilson's column. Earl Wilson? You mean you didn't read this? Listen, Broadway nightlifers are still laughing at the romantic antics of the famous Shakespearean actor and that beautiful hunk of stuff, Cuddles McClune. Montague, Montague, act your age. That's what it says. Montague, Montague, act your... I... Cuddles McClune. I don't know how you do it. I think I'm going to grow a beard. <laughs> now listen, Flugel, it's another mistake. I demand a retraction. Mistake? Famous Shakespearean actor, Montague, Montague, act your age. Cuddles McClune, I never heard of her. She's a burlesque dancer. Dancer, I say. <laughs> Cuddles McClune, Shakespeare said what's in her name, but... 
Cuddles the Coon. Oh, no. Mother, mother, please let me think. Lily, there's nothing to think about. You read Earl Wilson's column. Now, hurry, we can still catch that plane to Cleveland. Now, Mother, I'm sure Edwin will have some explanation. That I don't want to miss. Both of you. I trust Edwin, and I assure you he never heard of a person named Cuddles. Here he comes. Hello, Edwin. Hello, Cuddles. I mean, Lily. Cuddles! Mother! My baby! Lily, I'm innocent. Get away from her, you vulture. Yeah, you low lass. Go back to your burlesque queen. Lily, you can't believe it. Edwin, I don't know what to believe. First went through, and now... Cut, no, Lily. Uncle Goodhart. But it's the last time anyone in Cleveland will listen to you. Lily, believe me, I've never heard of Cuddles. I never saw her. It's all a horrible mistake. Agnes, the telephone. Hello, this is what's left of the residence of Edwin Montague and Lily Bolaine. <laughs> Who? No kidding. Why don't you get in from the country? As soon as you read the article. Oh, sure, we're all here. Come right up. Now for the fireworks. Agnes, who was that? Your father. Oh, no, that's all I need. Let me out of here. Hey, but are you afraid to face your father? Lily, he'll only make it worse. You know him. He gets fat on trouble. Lily, before he comes, please believe me. Oh, Edwin. <laughs> Lily, don't go near him. I'll get it. Welcome, Mr. Montague. Agnes, my little dog. <laughs> Come here, you lovely wench. Give me a kiss. <laughs> oh, let me go. Let me go. Oh, oh he thanks me. Uh, and Lily, Lily, my dear, dry those tears. I can't stand seeing a beautiful, luscious woman like you cry. Hello, Dad. Kiss me, you little devil. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Watch him, honey. 84 years old. He's still in there pinching. <laughs> Dad, that's enough. Hey, wait. Who is this vision of loveliness, this angel I see before me? Lily, it can't be. Yes, it's my mother. Mrs. Boyne. Keep your distance, Cyril Montague. But, Mother, really, you haven't seen him since our wedding. That was enough. Any man who, in the middle of his son's wedding, will reach over and deliberately pinch the bride's mother. Well... <laughs> Lily, Lily, my dear, she looks like your daughter. And now, where is he? Hello, Father. It's always nice to see you. Hello, Father. It's always nice to see you. Spent half my life trying to teach him to speak correctly, to be a great actor like myself, and what comes out? Marbles. <laughs> Hello, Father. It's always nice to see you. All right, Father. All right. Sonny, tell me, what are you doing to your marriage? Copacabana cuties. Shame on you. A boy of your age. <laughs> Dad, it's not true. Dad, it's not true. No. You young fool, just when it looked as though you and Lily were a good match, you have to ruin it. Hooting around with Copacabana cuties. If he was brought up right. Oh, please, would you shut up? Son, speaking like that to a lady, go wash your mouth out with soap. <laughs> Father, try and understand. Dad, that item you read in Winchell's column was about another Montague. I knew it. I had faith in my boy. Faith? What about Cuddles? Cuddles? Who's Cuddles? A burlesque dancer. My son? A Montague? With a burlesque... Huh? Oh, Agnes, some water. Dad, are you all right? Yes, yes, I'm all right. Now, please, please. I want to talk to my boy. Hello. Come, Mother. <laughs> Edwin, sit down. Father, let me explain. Edwin, it's not your fault. It's my fault. Your fault? Yes, it was my duty to tell you about these things long ago. <laughs> I kept putting it off. Father, what are you talking about? Edwin, pay attention. Let's begin from the beginning. There are the birds and the bees and there are the flowers. Oh, oh, Father, not that. Quiet. Quiet, you have to be told these things sometimes. 
Father, what are you trying to tell me? I never met this couple. I don't know her. I never had anything to do with her or any girl. Sonny, are you telling Daddy the truth? Yes. I'm ashamed of you. <laughs> I say, yes, the shame. You're no son of mine. Egad, when I first read that item, you and a copa cutie, I thought at last, he's a Montague. Egad, when I was your age, Edwin, I... <laughs> oh, well, the Montague spirit just never reached you. Lily! Uh, Father, help me convince Lily. Daddy will fix it. Egad, what a stupid kid. <laughs> Dad, did the beast confess? What about cuddles? Lily, I've just had a long talk with Edwin. He knows nothing about her. In fact, this boy here knows nothing about anything. <laughs> oh, quiet. Speak only when you're spoken to, Sonny. Sonny. <laughs> <coughs> Lily, don't encourage him. Lily, my dear, how could you have ever doubted this? Pudding-faced offspring of mine. Now listen, Father. Now listen, Father. <laughs> Lily, you are either the most fortunate or most unfortunate of women in this spiritless hulk that I have tried to mold into an actor. There burns but one flame, and that flame, Lily, is for you. Oh, Edwin, I've been a fool. You certainly have been, Lily. Were you out of your mind? Shame on you, Lily. But, Mother, did you hear what his father said? Burn but one flame. You're a lucky girl to have the son of such a father. My dear Mrs. Bohem, what is it that Shakespeare said about beauty? What I always say about Lily. Her beauty makes this vault a feasting presence full of light. Your beauty makes his voice. <laughs> it's nine o'clock. Go to bed. <laughs> Good night. Come in. Oh, this is the day I shall do everything in my power to forget. Good night. My dear Mrs. Boyne, now that the children are asleep, may I show you a bit of New York? <laughs> I shouldn't, but... <laughs> Wait, I'll get my coat. We're going to make things where all the girls are dreams. <laughs> Hello? Love me and Rose apartment? <laughs> apartment 305, please. We're going to make things. Hello? Cuddles? <laughs> <laughs> this is poopsie. <laughs> I'm busy tonight. Yes, I, yes, business. Huh? Yes, I saw him. Yes, we got in Earl Wilson's column. <laughs> and my boy almost got the credit for it. <laughs> huh? Tomorrow? Maybe. Good night. Yeah. I'm going to my team. Well, I'm ready. My dear, may I take your arm? Here. <laughs> <laughs> you pinched me! You told the again next Friday at the same time for another transcribed visit with a magnificent Montague starring Marty Woolley. Created and directed by Nat Hyken. Written by Nat Hyken and Billy Friedberg. Ann Seymour was Lily. Perth Kelton was Agnes. Included in tonight's cast were Art Carney as Cyril Montague, Johnny Gibson as Zinzer, Barbara Weeks as Mrs. Boehm, and Cliff Hall as Mr. Flugel. Jack Ward was at the organ. This is Don Pardo saying stay tuned for Duffy's Tavern, which follows immediately. Have fun at Duffy's Tavern, then it's the life of Riley on NBC.